Good evening and welcome to Magical Monday Live. Um, I am your hostess, Ivy. Uh, I started this, the Integrated Witch Group, a uh, couple years ago. Started out as the Rising Fire Tribe, but we have a more focused purpose now, and it has been renamed the Integrated Witch for those of you who are new to the group. Uh, we are, we come together to support one another in, in integrating our spiritual practice into our real life. So that's what our purpose is here today. And today we're going to talk about the Sabbath of Beltane. So if you have ever celebrated Beltane, um, I would love to know, uh, go ahead and type in the comments how you celebrated. Uh, but it is coming up. It is traditionally on May 1st. It is a Wiccan fire festival, although all different kinds of pagan celebrate it. So if you're not super familiar with the difference between Wicca and paganism and witchcraft and all that stuff, um, let me know in the comments. I have a blog post I can send, send your way. But basically when Wicca came about in the mid 20th century, um, all, it was like this resurgence of all of these holidays, mostly based in the British Isles. And so while well, this kind of came up with a resurgence of Wicca, many people in many different traditions now practice it. So it came from, like I said, it came from the British Isles and Celtic people used to celebrate from sun up, from sundown to sun up. And the actual date of Beltane is May 1st. So if you were wanting to be super traditional, you could start celebrating tomorrow night and um, um, sundown to sundown. I think I said sundown to sun up. Sorry, sundown to sundown. So you would start celebrating tomorrow evening, which is April 30th, and you would um, continue celebrating all the way through sundown on May 1st. Now, many of us have jobs. Uh, we don't, we're not able to kind of have that sort of awesome celebration because we have real life. We've got kids that have to go to school. We've got, you know, other responsibilities. So what many people do is they will, if they can't celebrate on that day, they will celebrate either the weekend before or the weekend after. And so if you live in a place that have a lot of public rituals, you will see these sorts of things. Um, you might have seen some rituals already happen last, last Saturday. It's usually Saturdays or Saturday nights. Um, and or you will see some coming up this weekend like my me and my coven we celebrated this past saturday but um there were other celebrations on sunday there were there are celebrations scheduled next weekend beltane is kind of one of the biggies um like Samhain. you'll see a like Samhain, which is at the end of october if you're new um it is it's the halloween celebration and there are tons of tons and tons of of rituals. It is the, the time where the veil is at its thinnest and Beltane is kind of on the opposite side of the wheel of the year. So it faces directly opposite of Samhain. And again, the veil is thin. So that's why we see a lot of fairies and, and um, those sorts of themes come up. So Beltane has a lot of different names and it's, it's a festival of joy and fertility and sexuality. And this spring festival, whether it is just about sexuality or it's about something else, it was celebrated in several cultures. One of the like most well-known cultures is uh, the Germanic culture. Well, uh, it's called Walburgish knot. I have to like look at it. So I say it right. <laughs> Cause there's a lot of consonants together. <laughs> um, a couple of those uh, traditions were bonfires and maple. Sorry, he just like sh shoved his porcupine um, on the ground. Uh, bonfires, uh, dancing the maypole, those sorts of things. In Finland, it was kind of similar. It was Walpurgis night, which is what Walpurgis not means. Uh, so they had like a carnival style festival with sparkling wine, alcoholic beverages, like a special low alcohol mead. Um, in the British Isles, again, we have May Day, which is still celebrated now. Uh, there's Morris dancing and bonfires and maypoles. One tradition that happens on May Day is leaving May baskets. So you create baskets of flowers and you would leave them on your neighbor's porches. I remember doing this in Girl Scouts. We, well, we learned how to do, we learned how to dance a maypole and I remember my sister and I making these like little paper baskets with flowers that we, we uh, left on our neighbor's doors. Um, 
I'm sorry. Yeah. On the doors for May Day. So that was something that we kind of like try to integrate into our lives, even as children. Uh, again, in Ireland, we've got Beltane. Again, bonfires. It seems to be bonfires to mark the coming of summer and lots of trees and flowers are mentioned in, in, in song and dance you know, to like bring in the summer and to banish those long nights of winter because now we've got this growing sun. So we've got this, like the days are lengthening. It's getting warmer. Hopefully it's it rained here today, but you know, it's, it, it's getting warmer in Italy. They have a, they had a, or a celebration called Cantar Magia, Maggio which meant like return to life and rebirth. So symbols of life, trees and flowers are mentioned in love songs. We've got uh, Mayos, which is a celebration in Greece, again, celebrating spring, celebrates the victory of summer against the winter. Um, it's sometimes conflated with festivals of Adonis and Dionysus. So of course more like fun and love and fertility and sex uh, like festivals. So we've got all of these things all of these different kinds of festivals are centered around some of the same themes. So when we talk about Wicca, when we see Beltane in like the Wiccan tradition, we always see the great right, um, the symbolic great right. So if you don't know what the great right is, we have um, the symbolic great right is where you, we have the athame, which is the dagger and we have um and we have a chalice, which is a cup. And there, obviously, there are going to be some nice words that you say, um, like, you know, like it is a ceremonial piece. It is um, pretty important. So you do have words that you say, but when you boil it all down, you're taking the athame and it represents the male and the chalice that represents a female and you put the athame into the chalice. Many times this is used as part of a cakes and ale ceremony, like for many rituals, but if you only do this once a year, it's probably going to be on Beltane because Beltane is the holiday of love and sexuality. Um, so that's what that is. That's a symbolic great rite. Uh, again, in many Wiccan, uh, any, many Wiccan celebrations, I can't talk today. Ugh, I, I did not get enough sleep last day. Sorry. Um, in many Wiccan celebrations, we also have uh, dancing, singing. We have maypoles, uh, maypole dancing. And if you've ever danced a maypole, again, usually there are, it depends on the maypole. It depends on who is actually uh, facilitating the ritual or facilitating the dance. But it's a very tall pole. Uh, many times it has many different colored streamers or ribbons. If there aren't multicolors, there's usually red and white. And one represents the male, one represents the female. And so, you know, you, we'd weave, you weave in and out in a maypole dance. And in some traditions, like you kiss, you know, as you're, as you're dancing. Um, that's probably like a little too much now, <laughs> but that used to be at least part of a uh, traditional maypole dance. If that's your jam, that's cool. If not, that's also cool. If you do go to Beltane celebrations, you know, just... A lot of Beltane celebrations do have alcohol and just make sure that um, you are very like, you're like, I don't know, you're very in tune with your boundaries because at Beltane, sometimes the energy can get a little bit more lively and more sexy and more like flirtatious. And uh, it's really important that you are clear with your boundaries. Uh, so there is that. So with those celebrations that I just mentioned, let's kind of think of that. Like all of those celebrations, what do they have in common? We've got love. We've got blooming flowers. We have fertility. We have sexuality. We have frolicking and joy. We have creation, um, especially creation for later enjoyment. There are some, some sorts of celebrations where, you know, you use flowers and you would like place flowers on graves to pr pr protect the people from bad spirits. I think that was in Portugal, but so you have this like creation and using these beautiful things that are happening for, um, for like a later enjoyment. All right. So what, how does that, like, what does that really mean to us? So if you have like had classes with me or you have been to some of these live streams before, you know that I, I will tell you colors and foods and this and that, 
but in reality, those things are just colors and foods and this and that. So you can be like, okay, my colors are going to be green, etc., and I am going to set my set my dinner table in green and pink because I feel like those are the colors that I read that I feel resonate with Beltane, and that's great. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Does that help you kind of align the energies of the wheel of the year? Yes. But we can take it a little bit, st a little step further and talk about the themes of the holiday and figure out some ways that you can actually integrate those themes into your celebration. So what's really important to me is like thematic, thematic celebrations, whether that is a huge ritual or it is a small intimate dinner with you and your loved one. Um, when you are are kind of focusing everything on a theme, it allows you, it allows that energy, it kind of creates like an intentional container and allows that energy to really do what it is that you want to do, which is kind of align with the energies that are, you know, of the earth of what is happening and with this turning of the wheel. Okay. So some of the main themes, like I just said, is love sexuality, frolicking, and joy, um, and creation, okay? So that's four, I think. When I say love, sexuality, fertility, uh, frolicking, and joy, and creation. So with those four, four, I wish I could, like, type them up and they would come up on the screen. Someday I'll find some awesome tech thing that I can, like, do things and things will pop up while I'm live, but not today. Uh, of those four themes, love, sexuality, joy, creation, if you can think of, choose one of those themes that you think that you could, you know, kind of create a celebration around and type it in the comments. And if, even if you're, even if you are catching the replay, that's totally fine. Um, just type it in the comments, love, sexuality or fertility, joy and frolicking, um, and creation. So those are four huge themes and they are different. You could tie them all together. If there are more than one that you feel resonates with you, that's awesome. But just choosing one of those themes, like let's just say love. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to use the, the theme love as a Beltane theme. Okay. So if I'm going to take love instead of joy and creation, etc., love, that could be love with me and my partner. I could create a celebration um, to foster more intimacy. It could be self-love. It could be um, the honoring of the love I have for myself. It could be um, maybe focusing on some deep work if I feel like I have work to do, you know, to do regarding love for myself. If my theme is sexuality and fertility, that could mean like some awesome sexy time with my husband, or that could mean getting back in touch with my own sexuality or honoring my own sexuality or honoring my vulva and heck yeah, it can be both. It can be whatever you want. These are, I'm just trying to like kind of give out a couple ideas. It you, if you can wrap all of those things up, it can be everything. Um, but for some people, it's easier just to choose one, especially if you are new or you don't have a lot of time to plan. I mean, obviously, we've got two days until actual Beltane. Um, but obviously, like I said earlier, you can celebrate whatever you want. You can celebrate on the weekend, etc. But yeah, yeah, right. Like, I love Beltane. So uh, if you want to focus on uh, frivolity and, and joy and, and frolicking, you know, you can... Dan you can make a plan to like do an ecstatic dance. You can make a, you can dance in your kitchen. You can find something that makes, that causes you joy. Find something that allows you to play. Find something that allows you to do something super fun without a, re a big reason or a big purpose. Like think about how it was when we were kids, right? We would go to the playground and we would play. We would run around. We would go on the crazy metal. Well, if you're my age, you went on the crazy metal, uh, the crazy metal merry-go-round that would like burn you and then flip you off and you would fly, um, you know, and you'd, you'd jump on the, sw on the swings and you would see how high you could go. And like, if you, can you remember what that felt like? Like, that joy, that just fun, you're like feeling it in your body. Like, so what can you do to create that feeling back inside of you? So joy, like what would cause that? 
I mean, and maybe it would be going to the, <laughs> so that one, um, maybe that would be going to the playground, or maybe that would be going to a water park, or maybe that would be taking some time and just swimming in your pool by yourself. Or, you know, what, what gives you that joy? Like, there's no reason you're doing it. You're just doing it to be happy and to feel amazing. Um, for me, like, I struggle with that. <laughs> I struggle with doing things because they are fun, which sounds kind of crazy. But maybe, maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're like that, too. So, this is a good time for you to think about what that is. On my Instagram, I I just posted, I think yesterday or something, not recently, um, it was a quote, I just watched Brene Brown's um, Netflix TED Talk thing, and um, she said, like, play is something without purpose. Oh, I just, I think I just got rid of my note. I had a note, I had a big, like, sticky note that was reminding me of what that was, but, um, but it's, it's, you know, having fun, doing something without purpose, you know, just having fun. So I think we, especially as women, we get kind of wrapped up in all of the things that make us, you know, that we have, what we have to do, you know, oh, I would love to, to paint, but because I enjoy it. Uh, but you know, I have to joy without purpose. Maybe, maybe I can't remember. I posted, I made a, I made a, I literally made a graphic and I can't remember now, now that it's important for me to remember, I don't remember such a dork. Um, <laughs> but you know, but we kind of like, I should clean the bathroom. You know, I should be cleaning. Like I have this, like I used to clean all of the time. Um, I used to, um, kind of be OCD and I mean that literally, <laughs> uh, but now I hate cleaning like every other person. So, you know, whenever I feel like that um, guilt, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's just that, that women's guilt sometimes that we feel like, oh, like we have all these society, societal things that we, that we're, you know, kind of have to deal with being put on us. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, you know, I, sh I, oh my gosh, I have laundry. I have laundry I should fold. I should, I have to do that. Once that's done, then maybe I can allow myself to have time to like have fun. And that's like, while I'm saying this, like in my head, I'm thinking I literally have laundry, but how ridiculous does that sound? Oh, you know, I'm going to put off enjoyment and pleasure because the laundry needs to be folded. I'm pretty sure the laundry is going to be fine. So we end up shooting all over ourselves and then we don't allow us this time for play and joy and fun. So this is a great time of the year to make sure you have that time for fun and play and go out into nature and climb a tree if that's your jam. <laughs> if You know, like whatever it is that kind of lights you up. And then, um, and creation, it is ridiculous. But it's easy to stay in our head, that's just it right? Like it's, it, it just, it kind of goes in our head and we, we have this, like these weird thoughts that are not realistic. We're telling ourselves a story like, oh, this is so much more important. And really, like, it really isn't, you know, we tell ourselves all kinds of stories. I, I probably will do a live stream on stories that we tell ourselves and how to kind of get out of that loop. But, um, but yeah, so also creation. So that might mean art that might mean, um, cooking, whatever creating is for you. Um, that could mean if you want to have a baby, that might mean this is the time to uh, smash and see if you can create a baby. Like it's all about create that creation energy. So we have all of those things. So those are a couple ideas of how you can center your celebration using those themes. And those themes, again, have been brought from all of these ancient celebrations, all of these super old celebrations that we talked about and we can just take those themes and from those themes we can extrapolate things that are are great like stepping stones great foundations for your celebration when we bring play and fun into our lives we are then enticed to do self-care things to follow that is super true i know he's ridiculous scooter i know <laughs> he's always in here too on my live streams he, he has to be in here he's so silly when mommy is home, he needs to be with mommy for some reason. It's too funny. So yeah, but you're totally right. When we bring play and fun. We are then enticed to do self-care things because then we remember, Hey, 
I'm fucking important. <laughs> like we forget, <laughs> you know, we're too busy working, doing things for other people, making sure everybody else is fine. You know, we forget, like we are all so important. So that totally, that totally makes sense. All right. So those are some stepping stones to create your own celebration. So, um, you know, what that, what might that look like? So whether you're doing, so you have some, I say so like 16,000 times. I know, you know, how people say, um, I say so, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you have to be able to laugh at yourself, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yep. All right. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going to like laugh at myself like a lot. <laughs> Because I can't start a sentence without saying that for some reason today. We've got different things we can do to celebrate. We could do a ritual. We could do an activity. We could do a craft. We can do a dinner. We can host friends. We can do just a sharing circle. You can do a huge ceremonial ritual. So you have all of these options. So in a ritual, if you were going to do something for love, you could, you know, cast some sort of like love spell for yourself. Um, or I guess I wouldn't say a spell. I would say like kind of a intentional working. Maybe I try to keep spells at moon, uh, at moon rituals and at Sabbaths. Cause it's more of like a celebratory energy, but you can honor your own self love or you can ask for blessings or you can ask the God goddess, you know, whoever you honor to help you find different ways to like love yourself or love your partner or whatever you need. Uh, so we've got love, we've got sexuality, we've got frivolity and joy. Like you can put that in a ritual or you can just like host a Beltane dinner and you can create a piece of art. You can, you can do like a whatever, sip and paint with your friends, you can, you know, you can do all these different things. It doesn't have to be a ritual. So if you have all these books and they're like, do this Beltane ritual, do all of these things, cast a circle, call the quarters, do the things. You don't have to do all of those things just because the book says like, Hey, this is a ritual and it's not a ritual unless you do all of these things. That's not true. You have all kinds of different options um, yeah, you have all these different kinds of options, uh, to do all of these, you know, to, to enact, to, to drop into all of these amazing themes. So you could just create a dinner, have a dinner party, have a Beltane dinner party. Uh, you know, you can go out to a club, like let's say on Saturday night, you're like, Oh, I'm going to a club with my friends. I already have plans. Well, that's great. You know, maybe you wear a flower in your hair intentionally, like this flower is represented of the growth, you know, you, whatever that flower represents to you, you can dress intentionally and then you can go out and have a freaking fun ass time frolicking and dancing and ha getting your joy on and intentionally, you know, remind yourself that you are the embodiment of this Beltane energy. Okay. If you want to do a maypole, if you ever uh, made a maypole, I think I have one on my Pinterest. I'm pretty sure I have a, like a how to make a maypole on my Pinterest board. I'm Pinterest.com slash Ivy Rose Lashford, I believe. Um, or a slash barefoot, which is my personal Pinterest and they're kind of linked together, but I have a Beltane board and I have all kinds of, and I'll put a link, um, when, when I figure it out, I'll put a link on here, but you know, you can create your own maypole uh yeah so dancing is super energy rising oh my gosh so much so much it can be so amazing it, especially if you come into it with that intention you know you're not just like i'm just having fun because i'm like you know drinking and, and you know you're just like trying to numb yourself that's a different intention that coming into it like i'm going to raise all this creation energy so especially if you make it intentional it's a completely different experience uh, if you want to create a maypole, you just need basically a pole and ribbons and something to affix to the top of the pole so that the ribbons stay in place. And you need an even number of people to do a maypole dance. And I'm sure there are tons of resources on how to do a maypole dance. It's pretty, pretty easy. But if you don't have a maypole and you, or you have like an odd number of people, because, you know, if you make a maypole, if you make a 10 foot maypole, where are you going to store that in your house? 
I don't have storage for a 10 foot maypole. So guess who doesn't do a maple every year? This girl. Uh, so you can also celebrate with drums. You can do a drum circle. You can do a circle dance. If you have multiple people that you want to, to dance, it's usually. <laughs> Uh-uh. Thank you. Um, so, you know, you don't have to do, to do a maple. So what I usually do with my coven, we usually do a circle dance and I'll choreograph a circle dance. I've been doing that for many, many, many years. They've gone from like really complicated to super easy. One year we danced with our brooms. Everybody brought their brooms and we had like a broom dance that we did together around the altar. It was super fun. It's all about you know, what you want to do. You don't have to dance with a bunch of other people. You can just do ecstatic dance. You can just turn on some music and pay attention to your body, drop into your body and like feel your sexuality. Like you're, you know, become embodied because you're like the embodiment of the goddess, right? So, so feel that, feel the energy coursing throughout your body and allow your body to move in the way that it wants to move. So you can do an ecstatic dance. You can uh, do something with percussion instruments uh, one year because this is something that I, if you have a group and you don't have a space for a maypole and you're just like in somebody's backyard or you're in a park and you like the ribbons and you like the idea of the maypole, but like nobody's going to make a maypole. Something that I did that was so fun, so fun, uh, is I made, we made ribbon wands and we did a circle dance with ribbon wands. Now, if you don't know what a ribbon wand is and you did not, and you're not in your forties and had get in shape girl and pretended that you are a rhythm gymnast, basically you get a dowel like this. You can buy them at Michael's or you can go to like Home Depot and have them cut it. It's about like a foot or whatever, maybe a little bit smaller, whatever you want. You, you can just, basically you're affixing a long ribbon, probably at least five feet long, I would say to the dowel. And I did that by using one of those little eye hook things where you screw it in. So I screwed that into the, to the dowel. And then I affixed the ribbon to like a little one of those lanyard hooks. So I just clicked it on there and I put bells on it and I was, you know, did ridiculous things and I painted everything, you know, I just, I went, you know, all out cause I was really excited about ribbon wands because that gives me joy. Sometimes crafting gives me joy, right? So I painted them all silver and glittered them up and, you know, made one for everybody. And we did a circle dance with these ribbon ones. And it was so fun. Like it was one of the most fun ones we did. We were all laughing. We were all giggling because, because it was just like, you know, you're, you're, you know, you know, playing with the ribbon and like, you're literally playing and dancing and you've got ribbons and, and I fully suggest that you do this. Um, it's great if you have kids and if you want to get kids involved, um, or if you just have, you know, two other witchy friends or one other witchy friend and you want to have fun and, and play and, and have a great, super fun Beltane and you want to play with the ribbons, but you know, making a maple is hard and it's really hard to do a maple with two people or three people, you know, it's a lot better if you've got like six or eight people. So ribbon wands are totally a thing. I have that also on my Pinterest as well. I will make sure that I do put a link in here. All right. So again, I told you I was going to tell you colors, foods, et cetera, et cetera. So I will. Um, colors, bright colors, flowers, like almost all the flowers are being flowers right now. Uh, like I feel like Ostara is kind of like first flowers and and at least here in Southern California, that's kind of how I see it. And we've got like first fruits in here. Cause like now like everything is fruiting. My neighbor's lemon tree is, is calling my name. <laughs> um, you know, we've got all of these fruits we've got, so we have all the bright colors, right? We've got green. Everything is definitely verdant green again. You know, we can tell that we're definitely coming into summer. So think about what summer looks like to you. What colors do you do you like associate with summer? And those are the colors that I suggest that you use for your altar or your decor or, you know, your rituals, your, your garb, whatever it is that you're doing. 
Foods include decadent food and drink. Again, it is about sensuality. It's about sexuality. It's about creation. Um, eggs, we still have eggs because we've got fertility. So anything that is representative of like fertility, we've got like a lot of people make phallic breads. Some people eat uh, edible flowers, well, candy like nasturtiums or whatever. Any like I love to adorn things with ribbons. When you're, I made like a stack of brownies. And I like put like flowers and butterflies and ribbons on it just because it's super fun and it's Beltane, right? Uh, a lot of people do alcohol stuff. You know, I know usually mead is kind of a summer solstice thing, but we do see mead kind of starting to happen at Beltane. Uh, something I really, really like to do for Beltane is sangria. Uh, sangria. Either a white sangria or a red sangria. Uh, this year, because uh, everybody at my Beltane thing nobody really drinks alcohol right now so we've got I made like a non-alcoholic sangria recipe with which is it's very easy by the way I'll tell you how to make it if you want to do a non-alcoholic sangria it is so awesome you take I think I usually will take like if I'm making a huge thing of it I'll I'll take uh one of the ocean spray cran palm cranberry pomegranate juices and to it, I, what I'll do is I'll heat up water, probably like for that, I'd probably say like four cup, three, three to four cups of water. I, I'll boil it. Um, and then I will put in a couple cinnamon sticks, actual sticks of cinnamon and black tea. So probably like if I was doing that, I'd probably do like four or five black tea um, bags. And you just let that hang out for a while until it kind of starts to cool. And then you pitch the cinnamon and you pitch the tea you chop up whatever fruit you like 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 lemons i did lemons limes uh oranges apples if you have berries you could throw those in there as well um and then once once everything is cool you just kind of put it all together and you just refrigerate it overnight and it becomes this really delicious spicy fruity sangria that is non-alcoholic so that is a really fun non-alcoholic sangria recipe you can make um or you can just make real sangria where you chop up all kinds of fruit and you put it with wine and brandy or um, with like seven up, whatever, whatever, you know, however you like to make your sangria. But I really like that because, you know, it, again, a lot, of, you know, I just talked about like how the, um, the Greeks had a celebration called Myos. I think it was, that sounds more Roman to me. So I'd have to check my notes, but you know, it was kind of conflated with these other spring festivals of Adonis and Dionysus because it was all like love and, and drinking and fun and, you know, loosening up because summer is coming. So if you want to do something alcoholic, I really like the idea of sangria because you're using all of those first fruits that are happening. You know, you're using that seasonal fruit thing that's happening and you're putting it into something that you are ingesting in your body. So you're aligning kind of with the, you know, with the, the earth's energies in that way as well. Okay. It is, it was really awesome. Like, but if you, like, I don't drink a lot of tea. I know bad witch, right? <laughs> bad witch stereotype. I don't, I don't drink a lot of tea. So when I do, I was, I get like really wired. Uh, so be aware if you don't drink a lot of tea, it does not taste like tea. So you might be pretty caffeinated. Um, deities to honor, you know, go with your theme. If your theme is love, you might want to look into love deities. If your theme is fertility, you know, like maybe some fertility deities like Priapus, Pan, love, maybe Aphrodite, um, Inanna, sexuality, definitely Inanna, um, you know, anything that has to do with the spring, like Flora, goddesses like Flora, Artemis, Hera, Diana, uh, gods like Bacchus, Dionysus, Carnunos, Faunus, you know, those like fertility and like, like lush, lush, I guess, sensual gods and goddesses are, are deities that are often honored here. Um, but, you know, I do not believe that deities are like plug and play. So if you are going to honor a deity, like, you know, I feel like this is a disclaimer I always say. If you're going to honor a deity, honor a deity. You know, do an offering, read, you know, research, learn about that deity. Don't just be like, what up, girl? Like, you don't want to like booty call a deity, like to come down and like see my ritual or like, you know, help me do this thing without trying to kind of at least establish some semblance of respect for that deity. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> See, and I don't drink coffee either. I, I drink Diet Pepsi. I said it. I drink Diet Pepsi. Like, Diet Pepsi is my coffee. I just, I figure, like, the resveratrol in my wine probably ca cancels out the aspartame in my Diet Pepsi, and I'm totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> people are like, is that Diet Pepsi at work in the morning? Go, Psh, it's so loud. I'm like, yes, it's okay. You can judge me. Girl, don't care. All right, so that's pretty much Beltane in a nutshell. Super fun energy, super happy energy, very springy, very fruity. Again, themes are love, sensuality, joy, creation. And, you know, don't, don't be afraid to, you know, just like do some inner work, do some journaling, you know, think, think about what, of, which of those themes really resonates with you and think about what you can do to honor that in yourself, in your life with others, you know, what is important to you right now and how can you honor that? What would make you feel like you're honoring that flowers, flowers on an altar, candles, a new dress, like what will, what, how can you honor that energy in yourself and for yourself? And if you are in a group with other people, <laughs> um, then, you know, how can you do that for, for others? Okay. So that's pretty much it. That's Beltane kind of in a nutshell. You know, I, again, I told, I mentioned some colors, I mentioned some foods, et cetera, but really it is so important that it really resonates with you and how that can fit into your life. If you don't have time for a Full on ceremonial ritual where you're doing all the things and calling all the things and you know lighting 16,000 candles like that is amazing if that's what you want to do uh, if that's not what you want to do or if you don't have time for that or you don't feel like that's really going to fit into your life do not feel bad about it do not feel bad about not doing a structured ritual for Beltane I will tell you that right now do not feel bad you know give yourself permission you know say I give myself permission to celebrate Beltane in a way that feels right for me and that I can integrate into my lifestyle and what is going on with me right now. Because when you are doing that, when you are allowing yourself to celebrate in a way, you know, that, that fits in with everything, you're honoring your own self, you're honoring yourself and you're honoring, you know, Beltane, you're honoring that, that earth energy. But it's really important that, you know, you don't feel like you have to do all of this crap because everybody, cause there's like Insta perfect. Oh my gosh. So many Insta perfect altars on Beltane, and, you know, just that, that doesn't have to be you. The important thing is that you are honoring yourself. You're honoring your responsibilities to your family, to everything as well as your self care and just do something that will fit in with what you already have going on. Okay. Cause because what you don't need is more stress. Beltane isn't about stressing out about what you're going to freaking do for Beltane. So just take a little bit of thought and, and see what feels right. And again, you don't have to do it on Wednesday. You know, you can do it this upcoming weekend. So you have plenty of time to really think about it. Think about what you want to do. It could just be taking a trip out with your kids to the park and, you know, taking pictures and learning about what flowers or what trees are around. You know, it could just be something like that. Just align yourself with the energies the best way you can. Okay, so that's it. And I will see you guys soon. I will definitely see you on Monday. I'm probably going to go live because I have something that something in store for the month of May that I want to do. I'm hoping to get everything prepared for that in the next couple days. Uh, if, if, if so, <laughs> you will see a video about that. So that's it. I will talk to you later. Bye.